Now let's talk about load balancer. The thing is, when you have multiple instances of a same service, right? let's say, uh, even if you talk about monitoring application where we have one application, we can have multiple instances of it. That's how you can scale it, right? Uh, we call them as horizontal scaling where you can create multiple instances. So whenever a client sends a request, now based on which instance is free or available, the request goes to that particular instance. So let's say we have three instances and then one and three are busy. The request goes to second instance, right? That is called load balancing. So that one instance will not be busy with all the requests. So you can balance the load between instances. If we can achieve the same thing in the microservices, of course, every service imagines of one application. So let's say we don't have a lot of load on the quiz service. So let's say we are not creating multiple instances of it. We have only one. But let's say the question service is very busy. So what we can do is we can create multiple instances of it. So let's say we have two instances. Now, when a request goes from the client side to the quiz service, when the quiz service wants to access a question service, we have two options there, right? Now, based on the load on each instance, we can decide where to send the data, where to send the request, right? That is called load balancing. Now, in the earlier days or way back, we used to do everything manually, but because of some tools and some libraries, it has become easy now. And with the recent versions of Spring, we get that by default in the system. So the moment you get your Eureka client and thing, and if you expand your, uh, so let's expand this. So let me expand this external libraries we do get those jar files by default. So if I go down and if I expand this, you will find a load balancer somewhere. So you can see we have by default load balancers here. So we don't have to add them manually. But the question is how, will you, how we are going to use it. So you don't have to do any configuration. The moment you use Fing client, it will automatically search for question service and whichever service has or whichever instance has a less request, it will send the request there. And even if you have two instances and if it, if you don't, there's no load. Basically, it will switch between the two instances and right? you don't have to worry about it, right? Okay, that, that sounds good, right? Uh, but then how we are going to implement this or how, do we, how we are going to check this? Now, even if you have not done any configuration and whatever we have done till now, the quiz service was actually sending requests to the first instance and the second instance of question service one by one alternatively. And the way you can see that is let's go back to the question service and let's only target on the get questions. Okay, so we are in the controller, which is question controller. And every time you say get question, let's say, or let's see which particular instance it is using. Now, how do you differentiate between these two instance with the port number, right? So one instance is running on 8080. The second instance is running on 8081. So what we can do is uh, we can just print the port which is getting used and that will solve our problem right now to in order to do that we need to get uh get hold on something called environment now in the spring framework we do have environment so we can just use that environment we, the, the variable is environment as well and then let's auto wire this so you don't have to instantiate this now once you get this environment i can go back to the method which is get questions and here let me print it. So I want to print the environment. Now this has something called a property and which property I want to target. I just want to get the port number, right? So the, we can simply do that with the help of local dot server dot port. So it will tell us which port it is running on and then it will print on the console. Now, after making the changes, I have to make sure that I restart both the instances of question service. We don't have to restart the quiz one. So let me restart. So we are basically restarting both the services, which will take some time. And I think it's done. Both the service have been restarted. One is running on 8080. The second one is running on 8081. So let me go back to my postman and we'll request to the quiz. Okay. Now what we are getting is get question. So for a, we are sending a get request for question ID two. Let us send, and you can see we got the response, right? But let's verify which instance is getting used. So if I go to the first instance, you can see this. This has been used. And this has not used yet, which is 8081. Let me send the request once again. And you can see it is again sending to the first one. Let's try once again. And now again, it is using the same one. Re refresh. Okay, let me try once again, multiple times. Okay, now you can see <laughs> after multiple requests, the request is going to 8081. So it, it is going in random. So basically, whichever service is free. So if I can send multiple requests, and when you get a lot of requests to one particular instance, of course, it will dev deviate. You can see the request, response, request is going to 8081 and also 8080. So alternately, it will send, not exactly alternative, but 
uh, it will check which is the free instance, right? So at least we are getting this by default, which is your client side load balancing. And at one point I thought it's not working, but yeah, it's working. You can see the request is going here and we don't have to worry about it, right? Because both the instance are same. So irrespective which instance it is calling to, we're getting the same output, right? So that's how basically you can load balance. Let me try once again, it, 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 lo it looks cool. So you can see the request going to 8081 and also to 8080. So that's how we can use this. That's how we can use the load balancer. So the way it works is with the help of Fain Client. It will help you with the load balancing and you don't have to do it anything manually. And if you want to print it, you just have to print environment.get property and the property name is local.server.port and environment variable is this, which is coming from Spring Framework. So just make sure that the environment which you're using here is coming from the Spring Framework, not from Hibernate because in the Hibernate as well, we have the same environment type. So yeah, that's it about load balancing and we are doing it with the help of Fain Client and Eureka Client.